You may remember a few months ago in summer 2024 when I made a video about the cancellation of the Viper rover, which was an all-around terrible decision. If you don't know, Viper is a NASA rover that has one goal, find water ice on the south pole of the moon. Humans need water, and we know that the lunar south pole has ice. We just don't know where the best places to get it are, and that's what Viper was meant to solve. It's the moon's first large-scale rover, meant to survive for 100 days on Mons Mountain, a several kilometer tall plateau on the south pole. Mons Mountain is also a potential landing site for Artemis 3, the first crewed mission to the moon in over 50 years, so it's a very good idea to explore it if it's chosen for human arrival. Finding the best places to mine water is also critical for building a moon base. Of everything the Artemis program has done so far, I'd consider Viper the first real step of a base. Orion can get to orbit, Clips has sent a few landers with varying degrees of success, but if Viper works, it'll give us a ton of data about where to put a base on the moon that we just don't have right now. Unfortunately, Viper was over budget, and more importantly, Astrobotic's Peregrine 1 mission was a failure. Astrobotic was contracted to deliver Viper to the moon on their second mission, Griffin 1, and with the failure of their first, NASA didn't feel confident in setting Viper on the second mission. Problem is, it costs money to keep the rover from falling apart while waiting for Astrobotic to figure out landing on the moon, and it was money NASA didn't have. So Viper, despite being fully built and nearly ready for launch, was cancelled. If this went through, this would have been a major step back for the Artemis program and lunar exploration at large. The moon isn't a very good place to live, but it's a great place to industrialize because of its huge amounts of raw materials and low gravity. Getting bases on the moon as soon as possible is necessary if we want a serious future in space anytime soon. And Viper was just one step of many, and its cancellation was going to set everything back. However, even a few months ago, Viper still had a chance of being resurrected. NASA hasn't disassembled the rover, and several organizations from colleges to space companies expressed interest in buying Viper for various reasons, from sending it to the moon intact to using its instruments on other missions. Letters to Congress were also made, which ended up causing several actual members of Congress to explicitly say cancelling Viper was a bad idea. The entire space community rallied around this incredibly important mission, and over the months we had very little news about it. Until now. Because NASA has finally announced that, officially, Viper has been saved. It is going to the moon, intact, and it will carry out its original mission. However, it would almost certainly not be flying on Griffin 1, Astrobotic's second lunar lander mission. So it's going to be very different from what it was originally built for, but a few major things will remain the same. It will include a rover, it will land on the lunar south pole, and it will search for ice. But everything else is now totally up in the air, like how it'll get to the moon, what other objectives it will have, if any, and what modifications to things like its landing site or mission lifespan will be. So this video will be a look into the future of Viper. The mission is back, but in what form? First off, NASA's requirements. One of the major concerns people had about the cancellation of Viper is that even if it was still going to be used, it might be disassembled, and its scientific instruments used on other missions. This is a bad idea because it would add unnecessary wear and tear to the instruments, leading to worse results on future missions, and instead of doing all the science at once, it will have been done much slower over the course of many years. Luckily, NASA has confirmed that this will not happen. In a recent press release, they have confirmed that any private entity that buys Viper is required to keep it intact. They cannot disassemble it, and they cannot use its instruments for anything other than Viper's original mission, searching for water ice on the South Pole. Not only that, but they are also choosing a partner to give Viper based on how open they're willing to be. NASA is requiring that the results of Viper's experiments are made free and open for other scientists and other organizations to access. So whatever company gets Viper can't keep the science for themselves, they must release it. And one of the major criteria for which organization gets Viper is how willing they are to be open about results. So when Viper gets to the moon, it will be sent there as a fully intact rover and any and all experiments and studies it does will be released publicly, as NASA will favor proposals that leave the information open to anyone who wants to access it. This is the best possible scenario we could have gotten for Viper. Not only is it going to the moon in one piece, but its results will actually be available to scientists across the world, not just to a select few. So, who's getting Viper? NASA has said it's going to go to a private entity, meaning a company. It won't be going to the space agency of another country. In August, NASA asked a request for information, or RFI, from various organizations. This means it basically contacted all the organizations that wanted Viper, and asked exactly on what they plan on doing with it. So far, we've received very little information about the RFI, but we have gotten a little from one company, Intuitive Machines. 
Intuitive Machines is a company that has been surprisingly successful recently. In early 2024, it crash-landed the IM-1 mission on the lunar south pole, and miraculously, the thing survived, transmitted data, and successfully performed almost all of its mission objectives. While it wasn't a soft landing and a lot more work is needed, IM-1 was a success. Not only that, but Intuitive Machines has been getting a lot of contracts from NASA and other organizations recently. Their IM-2 mission, their second lunar mission that is targeting a landing at Shackleton Crater to search for water ice and deploy a small rover, is launching no earlier than February 26th of this year, in just a few weeks. They submitted designs for crewed lunar rovers, and are working with Nokia to create a lunar cellular network to allow much easier communications, which will be tested on IM-2. Intuitive Machine still has a long way to go, but I can definitely see a path toward success. Anyways, Intuitive Machines has publicly stated that they are going to try to acquire Viper for use on a new mission called Valor, or Viper Augmented Lunar Operations and Reconnaissance. There's been very little information about this mission. In fact, the only mention of it I can find is a Twitter post from Tim Crane, the company's Vice President of Research and Development. So I can't say anything about what exactly Valor is, except that it's a lunar mission that wants to use Viper. Another contender for acquiring Viper is Blue Origin. They're planning a landing of the Blue Moon MK-1 lander, upgraded versions of which will eventually send crew and cargo to the moon for Artemis, sometime this year in 2025. Blue Origin definitely has a lot of ambitions for the moon, and I've heard that they're at least somewhat interested in buying Viper. This would also make sense, as Blue Moon is more than big enough to deliver Viper to the surface. So, of all the contenders, of which there are probably several we don't know about, I'd consider Intuitive Machines and Blue Origin the most likely to send Viper to the moon. Whether that be with the Valor mission, or a hypothetical delivery using Blue Moon, which is speculation on my part, is anyone's guess right now. Or who knows, maybe somebody that we aren't expecting at all will get it. But no matter what, Viper, after months of uncertainty, is going to the moon. This is a massive victory for both the colonization of the moon and space exploration in general. Viper is going to do something that, so far, nobody else has tried. The joint Japanese and Indian rover Lupex is fairly similar, but it's several years away. IM-2 and China's future Chang'e missions will also search for water ice, but they're just landers and will only contain small rovers, not large ones. Viper as it stands right now is completely unique and unlike anything we've ever sent to the moon before. And this incredibly exciting mission is something that I can finally say with confidence is going to happen. Because of the chaos of the last few months, Viper has likely been significantly delayed, and a 2025 launch is incredibly unlikely, unless something crazy happens like Blue Origin putting it on the first flight of Blue Moon. 2026, or maybe 2027, is when I'd expect this rover to actually reach the moon and start doing science, which is probably a year or so earlier than Artemis 3. Viper's results will help tremendously in choosing the location for the first moon base. If it still ends up landing on Mons Mountain, which isn't known for certain, then I wouldn't be surprised if Artemis 3 lands there as well, and our first base is put there. But no matter what, the future of the exploration and colonization of the moon is looking bright. A bad decision has been reversed, and Viper is back. And because of that, the roadmap to the construction of an actual base on the moon is a lot clearer. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space and space colonization.